Hi, it's Anna Haferman, and today I want to show you this little double layered slipper sock that I made on the LK150. I used a variegated yarn, so they changed colors, and uh, they don't quite match, but since they're all kind of the same color family, they kind of looked pretty cute together, I think. Now, the reason it's double layered is because it's actually two separate socks and one is made slightly smaller than the other so they fit inside each other but each piece will come off the machine completed you won't have to do any sort of finishing work besides uh, weaving in a couple tails and putting one inside the other now before I get to that I do want to thank everyone who gave to the buy me a coffee link and to the YouTube super thanks your donations really do help me to make more videos, so I appreciate it. I'm going to use this Karen Skinny Cakes yarn, which is a DK weight or number three yarn here in the U.S. Um, this uh, knits up really nice on the LK150. So that's what I'm going to use. You could use any other DK. Um, or you could use two strands of sock yarn. Now you can do these in any colors you want. You could make the two inner ones one color, the two outer ones the other color, or however you want to do it. Um, I just used this because that's what I had. Okay. So I have my machine threaded and I'm going to set the row counter to zero. Zero, zero and I'm going to go on tension 3.5. Now you may have to adjust your tension and according to what yarn you use. So what's great about this sock is that it um, will come off the machine fully finished. So for this smaller one, the, I'm, this, I'm starting with one of the inside socks. I'm going to thread the machine and put a clip on the end of the tail. I don't know if you could see that. All right, so I'm trying to get this so you guys can see really well. Um, so I've got the carriage threaded with uh, a clip on the tail of the yarn. And I don't really need a long tail for this because it's going to come off the machine completely ready to go. Okay, so now I'm going to e-wrap these 21 stitches. Now this inner one is about a size six, I wear six and a half, this fits me. Um, the next one will be kind of more a more medium size. So if you have a more medium sized foot, you will start with the um, basically making the outer one, and then you'll make one a little bigger than that. So, but for a s smallish foot, we're going to do 21 stitches, and I'm e-wrapping here. I'm just going around the needle, and that's it. So now I'm going to knit uh, 25, 24 rows for the ankle. So on this one, I'm knitting, I'm doing the E wrap and that's going to roll at the end. And then I'm going to do 24 rows. So that will be the ankle and that's what we're doing right now. So we'll do our 24 rows and it's sometimes a little difficult to knit off E wrapped stitches, but you can do it if you go slow and just make sure they all knit off and so that's one and I'm going to do again two and each time I'm checking that everything is knitting off well and I'll do three and now after my third row I can start getting some weight onto the knitting which is going to make it a lot easier. So, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty
two, three, 24. Now, um, so now I've got the ankle finished and now I'm going to go into the heel. So I'll just rehang those. So the heel starts here and ends here. So we're gonna short row that. And I uh, double wrapped mine because I liked the way it looked. Uh, so you can either wrap or not wrap if you have a special way you like to do heels, do it that way. But for mine, I'm going to put the carriage in hold and that I'm just going to one over here. On the KX350, you would do H. So now, then I'm going to pull the furthest needle from the carriage and knit and then wrap. For this needle from the carriage, knit and then wrap. For this from the carriage, knit and then wrap. For this from the carriage, knit wrap. I'm going to keep doing that until I get down to seven needles in the middle and seven on each side. It's usually when you make a heel you um, divide, the stitches get divided into three so that's what I'm using. Now when you get to this point what happens is you're going to starting to get bigger in the middle than it is on the edges so you really need to weight down that middle so so now I have seven here and then I'm going to pull that one so now I'll have seven 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 and then I'm going to knit back and I'm going to wrap. But now what I'm going to do is push back that same needle back to upper working position. So that's position C. And then I'm going to knit across. When I get to this side, I'm going to wrap that needle and push it back to position C and knit across. And I'm doing this one. I'm wrapping every time and pushing it back. So wrap and then push it back. Wrap, push it back. So you see this time I'm doing the needle that's closest to the carriage. So I wrap it, push it back until I get them all back into place. So now I'm going to go keep going. And then wrap this one, push it back, and then I'll knit a, one more row. Okay, and now I'm going to do the sole. So the sole goes from the heel to here, and that's 40 rows. So I'll just do 40 rows so I can reset my row counter and do 40 rows. Okay, so that's 40 rows. So now I have the ankle, the heel, and the um, sole finished. I have the ankle, then the heel, and then the sole. So now I'm going to start on the toe. So I went heel, ankle, sole, toe. Okay, so to do the toe, I'm going to do it exactly the way I did the heel with one difference for the last row. So pull the pull the needle and I'm still in hold because I never went back 
to normal because I had I didn't need to because the stitches weren't being held so I'm pulling furthest needle knitting then wrapping for this needle knitting wrapping And again, just make sure, make sure your weights are good. Now these uh, slippers, they, each one doesn't take too much time. Uh, do you could probably do four, you know, all four layers in probably an hour or so. So now I'm on, uh, I've got seven stitches there. I'm pulling my seventh one over here. And then I'm going to uh, knit back, wrap that one. And then that one I'm pushing back. And then I'll wrap this one, push that back, wrap this one, push it back. And again, you want to watch for that, how it kind of pouches out uh, for the, this is actually the toe. So I'm wrapping the last needle over here and pushing it back. And then I'm wrapping the last needle over here and pushing it back. And now I'm gonna stop for a second and show you what's happening. So before you knit that last row, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the weights off. And now I've done the whole toe. And then I'm starting this part, which I guess would be the instep. And then I'm going to do so as you go until I get to the end. So, but I want to start it all for this first row. Now, so as you go can be confusing at first, but if you look along this row of stitches, you can see you have a like a straight line, a horizontal line, like a knot, straight line, knot, this horizontal line, which is actually more of a loop, not loop. So you've got all that. So you need to pay attention because what you're going to pick up is not this because that's the wrapped one you just did. You're going to go and then there's the knot. So this first one is kind of the hardest to do. So you look here, you see this, you've got these two, um, strands right there and these you can tell there's a yellow one and a purple one there then there's the knot and then there's that straight line the loop and that's the first one I'm going to get and then I'm just going to pick it up and hang it on the needle and I'm going to pull the needle all the way out and I'm going to take my carriage off hold so I'm pushing these levers back to two because I want to be able to uh, do this I want to be able to pull that needle out if I have to. So I'm putting a weight on the back just to hold everything down. And then I'm going to knit. So that knit that in. So what it's going to do is close everything in. So now I'll do the same thing on the other side of the carriage. So you see here these two lines, two uh, threads. That's where we wrapped the thread. We don't want that one. And we don't want that knot, but we do want this this stitch right here and then we'll put it on the needle you can pull it pull it out if you want and knit across now when you go over here it'll look a little different this time because we're past the sock past the heel shaping so you'll see this large loop don't pick up that one that's the first one you picked up you picked it up already so you have your stitch that's on the needle that's the row you just knit that's the one you just picked up that's the knot and then this right here is the loop so pick that one up and hang it on the needle and knit 
And then when we go to this side, you see this long thing, that's the one you just got. So don't do that one. Don't do the knot. The knot is very hard to get into anyway, so that one you probably wouldn't pick. So pick that next one. And when you pick on, pull it, it sort of makes this one get a little smaller. So just pull that one and then knit. So that's how so as you go is. There's your big loop that you just did. There's your knot. And then there's the one you want. This took me the longest time to figure out how to do because I just couldn't understand why I wasn't picking this one up and it just didn't work out. So here's big one, no, not, no. And the next one, yes. So we just pull that one. And now I'm getting to a point where I have a little pocket here. So I'm gonna take one of my claw weights, and just stick it in there and that'll kind of hold everything down. So big loop, not small loop, yes. Go like that and knit. So we'll just keep doing that until we get, um, till we get to the end here and then it'll close the whole thing up. So you see on this, I did the ankle, the heel, the sole, the toe, and then this is where I started the sew as you go. And I keep going all the way up until I reach the top. So it's pretty, it's the same thing all the way down until you get to the where you did the heel. And when we get there, I'll show you it's just slightly different. So not that big one. So once you get the hang of this, it's pretty easy to figure out. And I really suggest making a practice one if you've never done so as you go uh, and just kind of getting comfortable with how that works. It's really pretty easy once you know what you're doing. But before you know what you're doing, it's not. So and I really have always had trouble with it until I just took the time and really just figured out what I was supposed to be doing. So now these socks are going to be probably very different colors, but I'm okay with that because, you know, I'm probably only wearing these around the house <laughs> and uh, they would make a nice gift. Uh, and now if you look down here, you can see our sock is starting to take shape and to see that's what the sew as you go looks like. So just continue. Okay. Do this one here. So now right here, this is going to be where the saw the heel shaping starts. So I'm still picking this one right here. And now over here I see this is where the yarn wrapped and I have two threads here. Just pick up the outer one and knit across. And then with any luck, you should have this one coming up right next and then pick up that outer one and hanging them. And that way, if you come to one on this side and then one on this side, you'll be on the right track and you'll know you haven't missed anything. So now here's your large loop. That's the knot. That's that wrap. So just leave that there. That's the one you want right there. And again here, large, large loop knot. That's the one. So Now I'm continuing up and I'm closing up the um, ankle now. And 
And I originally came up this, with this pattern because I wanted to make a sock, a slipper that came off the machine completely finished. And the first one I made was too big. So I decided, well, I'll just make another one that size and give those to somebody. But then I made the ones this size with the 21 stitches and I uh, put that on and it fit pretty well. And then I realized the other one fit over it really nicely. So that's how I decided. And it's a nice thick sock for a uh, slipper for winter. Um, they may be a little slippery if you have hardwood floors. So if that's a concern for you, um, some people put puff paint or silicone on the bottom of the um, sole. I'm not going to do that. But if you have anyone who you think might slip and fall, then I would definitely do that. Or come up with a different kind of slipper to get them. <laughs> so we're getting here, getting there. And let's see, I've got one here. How many do I have here? Okay, so here, that I think is my first e-wrap. So that's my large loop, that's my knot, that's the one I want. So I'm just gonna do that. Okay, so I think that I'm done. I have nothing else to pick up. So now what I'll do is get a darning needle and uh, I'm gonna do a back stitch bind off, which will match the e-wrap. So I'm going to cut this yarn, give myself some leeway. And then I'll just thread this needle <laughs> It's a big needle to thread it. There we go. Okay, so Backstitch, bind off, and this is actually pretty simple because, and we've only got 21 stitches, so it won't be that big of a deal. So I'll go in this first one in through the front, come through the back of the second one. Okay, then I'll come back through the first one and skip the second one, go into the third one. Now I'll go back to the second one skip that third one and then go into that one. So I'll just go back one, skip and go forward one. So this makes kind of a, a uh, it ends up kind of looking like E-wrap from the other side. And because it rolls, doesn't really matter. So, um, but this is pretty quick. Go like that. And I just keep doing it till you get to the end. Okay, so now when you get here, you're going to want to go back one and then into that same one again. And that's it, and there we're done. We're gonna get that weight out so we can take this off pretty easily. Okay, so when we take this off, so there it is, and it's finished. Um, the only thing I have to do is tie these two pieces of yarn together. And then I can cut those and I can weave them in. So 
So there it is. That's your sock, your inner sock. Now these are going to get woven in. And, but they kind of roll under there anyway. So encourage it to roll. And that's your inner sock. So I finished my second sock slipper and I, um, I actually timed myself. It took me about 18 minutes and as you can see it changed color quite a bit from this one. Uh, if you don't like the bright colors just do you know you do whatever colors you like. So um, now I need to make two outer slippers. So they're the same thing except I'm going to cast on 24 stitches. The first one I did 21. This one I'm going to do 24 and that gives me enough um, enough room that I can fit the one sock over the other, one slipper over the other. So if you, uh, I have kind of a small foot so the small one fits me and then the medium kind of fits over that but if you have more of a medium foot you may want to use this the uh, side, the stitches for the outer one that I'm doing as your inner one and then make your outer one a little bigger. So it's up to you what you want to do. Uh, I strongly suggest doing a test one just to get your fit and the technique down. If you've never done so as you go, it can be a little tricky. So you may want to... Um, try it out before committing to the whole sock thing. So I'm going to do 24 rows again for the, for the second ankle. I'm getting these weights on there. So Twenty three, twenty four, and now I'll start the heel just like I did the other one except this time I'm going down to eight, eight, and eight rather than seven, seven, and seven. So it's the same thing. Now that I've got the heel done, I'm going to do 42 rows. Now the inner one I did 40, now I'm going to do 42 for this one. So I've got 42 rows. Now I'll do the toe that's the same as the last one, go for it, same as I did the heel down to 8, 8, and 8. And then you just start picking up, doing the sew as you go, just like you did on the first one. And you don't need to count the rows because since you're sewing as you're going, it uh, picks up, it, you'll end up in the right spot. So I finished the last one and I've put them together. And um, as you can see, they fit nicely inside each other. So they're thick. Uh, I do want to point out that this sew-as-you-go seam looks like that, that way. And then when you turn it inside out, it 
it's like that. So it's very flat. So even though you have two layers, you don't have two bulky seams together. And you could even wear them inside out if you preferred that look. We look like this worn the other way. So you have quite a lot of versatility, not a whole lot of bulk. And uh, there you go. So let me know what you think. Thank you.